Fluna gave us COVID, the floor is now again back to you. I can tell you about the cases which are in our monitoring reports. In the last year, regarding Azerbaijan, we made an investigation of all the cases and you released, uh, for example, Mikhail Idrizov. And in the judgment was written, he, he got 11 years only that he is owning one book from Dan Brown Illumina. And come on, what, this is not what we understand, but, but uh, that was only. Now I go immediately to Leila. Leila, the floor is yours. 87 political prisons still remain behind bars. It's very important to adopt the resolution about political prisons in Azerbaijan. It may save lives of these people. When in January 2013, the deputies of Parliament Assembly of Council of Europe voted against the resolution prepared by Mr. Christopher Strasser, they literally turned on the green light to the most brutal repressions in Azerbaijan. It was the most brutal repressions, and you deputies did it. All of us was arrested. All of us. And as a result, today, there are no independent non-government organizations in Azerbaijan. There are no civil society. There are no independent mass media. Dictatorship and just dictatorship. Our Institute for Peace and Democracy was founded in Azerbaijan in 1995. So I started my human rights activity from Soviet time. And for almost 25 years, we are working on problems with political prisoners and tortures in Azerbaijan. Problem in Azerbaijan with political prisoners is well known. But for the last two, three years, we see not only political repressions, but also arrests, tortures, murder of citizens in different provinces in Azerbaijan. From 1994, people regularly died after tortures and prisons. But in 2017, 2009, <coughs> the number of people dying from tortures has increased significantly. In May, July 2017, more than 20 men died after tortures in Tertia region. We have better information about seven people. Mehman Telman Hussein was born in 1987, was arrested on May 7, 2017, in his own house in Jamili village in Tertia region. On May 16, his body was returned to his wife. The family was not allowed to bury Mehman Hussein in the cemetery because of new so-called status of an enemy and traitor. Information about all seven people you can see in my speech which is printed now here. And I just ask you to see these photos. To see these photos. It is a colonial who died. You can see him. It is a colonial Salet Gafar. His children stay without father. He was arrested on May 4, 2017, and on May 14, his body was returned to the family. Please just look and ima imagine how these people died under tortures. It is a young lieutenant, Tanki Mizamiolov. He was arrested May 12, May 21. His body was returned to the family. And please, young soldier, he was born in 1995, and they killed him in 2017. I cannot see these pictures. I spoke with the families of these children. I spoke with the mothers. I spoke with the wife. And this captain, Suleiman Kaziba, his son was born in the same year, and he died after a couple of months as his son, more. And no attention for this. No attention. <sighs> Political prisons regularly died from the torches during investigation period in Azerbaijan. For example, look, blogger Mehman Velandar was murdered on April 28, 2017 in Baku pretrial detention facility number one in Kyrgyzhani during investigation period. 
Now I read the regime also is carrying out repressions by imitating the fight with Islamic terrorism. Just imitating. During July August 2008, 62 people were arrested and six were murdered, just killed. We have the names and all information in our website that you can use it in our website. Today, we have 87 political prisoners. And these political prisoners can be today divided for seven groups. Group number one consists of journalists and bloggers. Today, five persons. This group includes so-called prisoners of Facebook. Who are they? They are young men who criticize Ilham Ali's policy on social networks, on Facebook. And as soon as they post a status which criticizes Ilham's policy on Facebook, mm -hmm. police appears in the flat and plans drug to them. Young men are then arrested on both accusation of drug trafficking. Just such. Mm -hmm. Group number two consists of human rights offenders today one person. Group number three consists of members of opposition parties and movements. Today seven persons. Group number four consists of victims of crimes in the Ministry of National Security. Today three persons. Uh, Mr. Schenk talked about this group. Who are they? In 2007, Ministry of National Security initiated Bogus case on so-called preparation of coup d'etat. In result, 11 people were arrested in 2007. One of them died under torches, young boy, 33 years old, and 10 received from 12 to 14 years in prison. This group is well known by the name of this political prisoner, Said Adashbili. Mr. Shenek met with Said. He knows this case, he talked about this. Seven people were released just now, in 2018, 2019. But three of them, including Said, are still behind bars. His mother died during these years. His daughter is going to die. Group number five consists of peaceful believers. Today is 56 persons. This is the largest group in the last 10 years. They are touched regularly. Just one horrible example. Please look at this photo. It's paralyzed. Abul Fes Bunyat. He's paralyzed. On July 11, 2008, he was sentenced to 15 years of imprisonment in Bogustan prison. They just take him from the trial and put in Bogustan prison. Group number six consists of hostages, one person today. Those are relatives of Ilham Ali critics who live in immigration. Since they cannot be arrested in Europe or in America, their relatives in Azerbaijan are taken as hostages and they are being arrested. Wonderful mechanism to press people who live in immigration. Group number seven, seven consists of term of life imprisonment. It's also important to pay attention to this group. All 14 men in this group remained in prison from 1993-1998. New criminal code of Azerbaijan Republic includes the punishment of life in prison and then came in power in 2000. The old version of criminal code before 2000 did not include punishment of life imprisonment. There was a death penalty and maximum of 50 years behind bars. Therefore, the sentence of death penalty of all who were sentenced before 2000 should be replaced to maximum 50 years of imprisonment. It was unlawful to replace death penalty to life imprisonment without trial and the court decision. When Azerbaijan joined the Council of Europe in 2001, Azerbaijan took commitment to release all political prisoners. And at that time, as mentioned, uh, the experts recognize all these people, political prisoners, and it's important to demand freedom for these people. Please also give attention to Gobustan prison, the torches here regularly, the torches of chief of Islam party, Mosum Samedov, chief of Muslim unity, Taliba Girzadeh. It's very important to introduce also sanctions against non-humans in Azerbaijan. The people who touched people, please pay attention to these officers and these people who touch people. It is a judge. 
During the years of Alif's rule, several hundred citizens died in prison, but none of the murderers were punished. Not a single murderer was punished. When international organizations called punish of this non human, the dictator Ilham Ali has repeatedly stated that they protected stability in Azerbaijan. They touched people. They protected stability. And finally, Azerbaijan authorities does not fulfill and ignore its commitment that it met with joint for Council of Europe. There was commitment to release all political prisons, the oldest political prisons in Azerbaijan. There was commitment to punish those officers of law enforcement agencies who participate in torture. No one is punished. Without great support of international community, me and my husband will die in prison. After prison, we write the book from Soviet camp to Azerbaijan prison, where we write everything about torches, about horrible situation in Azerbaijan. And today, it's important to save the life, people who stay behind bar. It's important that the resolution about political prisons in Azerbaijan will be adopted. We must do it. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I will give the floor to Mr. Ilkar Mamadov, who will be with us via video. My first call to the parliamentarians in the uh, parliamentary assembly of the Council of Europe would be do not buy any talk of reforms in Azerbaijan by the current regime. There is no reform, there is no improvement of the legal situation regarding the political business, and there is the, the mechanism for reproduction of this, of this problem, of this uh, political business, has not been eliminated uh, at all. Uh, Moreover, this school talk and the school atmosphere of uh, expectation of reforms in Azerbaijan reminds me very much the pre accession period, like the years 1999 and 2000, when Azerbaijan was preparing to become a member of the Council of Europe, and uh, there were built expectations in the Council that a young English-speaking president will soon rule Azerbaijan uh, and he will introduce a lot of reforms as Azerbaijan will become um, uh, an, a European country. Uh, three years later, uh, political prisoners were still in prison uh, at that time who had been identified at the time of accession. But they were still in prison. Uh, the transition of power from father to son happened uh, and uh, since then, during 18 years, as we have done situations in terms of compliance with democratic uh, values, uh, the principles of the Council of Europe has become only worse. Uh, I have a feeling that the uh, whole idea of end membership of Azerbaijan uh, in the Council of Europe has been put forward in order to legitimize the transition of power from Father Aliyev to Son Aliyev. And again, uh, as a result of these 18 years, Azerbaijan now is less democratic country than it, uh, than it used to be. Um, unfortunately, uh, regarding the problem of political prisoners, the, uh, bodies of the Council of Europe, the political bodies of the Council of Europe has, have been paralyzed. Uh, uh, the parliamentary assembly of the Council of Europe did very, very, very much little in this regard. Uh, I, I remember uh, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, we were talking to uh, various rapporteurs uh, from the Council of Europe and they, we were like talking to the wall. They were not listening. They always came with agendas, they always came with uh, other ideas, and uh, in fact, all this uh, atmosphere of impunity um, permitted Mr. Aliyev to create um, such, uh, uh, such problem and keep it always, because uh, by keeping the problem of political prisoners alive, he, he, uh, he can always distract international attention from the core reforms which needs to be introduced in Azerbaijan. So all attention is on those uh, political prisoners and we cannot move forward. Um, we involved, have been involved in preparation of the report on political prisoners uh, for many years now. And as I said, it's not just a list of the names, it's actually 
So in this report, we are demonstrating why we consider these people as a political prisoners. Uh, and we base our document, documents and our report on uh, criteria which was adopted by this house in 2012. And I remember that it was one of the uh, demands of Azerbaijani uh, deputies here. Uh, and actually they were right demanding this. But now we have criteria, we have reports, and uh, it's time to, re to release all political prisoners. Uh, I will not say anything about the numbers. Even one political prisoner is enough to raise the issue. Even one case of uh, unjustly imprisoned person is enough to uh, raise our voices and call uh, all stakeholders to uh, solve this problem. Um, and uh, release of 52 political prisoners recently, uh, maybe yes, it can be considered as a positive expectation for the future, but it doesn't solve the problem fundamentally. So to solve the problem fundamentally, there should be two things to be done. First, the rest of the political prisoners should be released immediately and unconditionally. Secondly, there should be the measures which will guarantee the end of the uh, political persecution in the country. Because without it, we will release on one hand we will release on one hand the one number of the political prisoners, but from another hand we will see the new detentions, new arrests, which we actually observed for the last 10, 15, 20 years. So without the uh, fundamental reforms, it will be not possible to solve this uh, issue. So the reforms, in my opinion, should be done in three main directions. First of all, it's a judicial. We are, without having independent judiciary, we will not able to fundamentally solve the political crisis issue. We will gather here, talk about the problems, but we will not solve them. The second direction is law enforcement and investigation. Because most of these fabricated and the bogus charges brought against the citizens of Azerbaijan in the investigation, by police or by other law enforcement agencies. And the third, it's a... a in my opinion, there should be free and fair and democratic elections in the country in order to guarantee the balance between the powers. Again, without it, it will not be possible to solve uh, the issues. So, uh, sometimes the, we hear from the gov government side, like from the go governmental media, that uh, why we are talking about the problems of the country and uh, even sometimes we are presented as a people who are actually happy to see these problems in the country, but we are not. I am here not because I am happy and I like to talk to you about the problems in Azerbaijan, particularly the problem of the political prisoners, but I am sad in fact that uh, today I am talking to you about the problem in my country, but at the same time I can't be silent, I can't uh, close my eyes and ears to the problems that I observe in the country and therefore my, uh, uh, let's say, request, my urge to the uh, Azerbaijani government and at the same time to the international community to guarantee the release of all political prisoners unconditionally and immediately. Thank you. We have very little time available up for us regretfully for questions from our members. I think we can only take about two questions and then uh, myself and Mr. Shenak will have some <coughs> remarks as well. Mr. Sadie, I give the floor to you. Very briefly, please. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Madam Chair. And I think this is uh, very obvious that you came to this hearing with a firm belief that dialogue and cooperation much more better than fingering and accusations. And that's why I think uh, very important to take into account this. Maybe it sounds a little bit strange. Yes, we have political prisoners in Azerbaijan. One million political prisoners 
in Azerbaijan as a refugees and IDPs created by invasion to my state and occupation of my territories. And without resolving these problems, that would be very difficult to find the solution of the problems which mentioned here. This is the first very important remark. And the second one, uh, respectable panelists, Ilgar Mahadev and Leila Yunus, they are absolutely free in their opinions. This is house of democracy. But they are belonging to political parties. Only maybe Rasul Jafarov is a real representative of the NGOs. And that's why let's divide political ambitions of these people from the real political, from the real fighting for human rights. I hope that these kind of hearings will be more in the parliamentary assembly. This is a very, very important to bring other people, to bring different opinions, and to find the solution. How can Council of Europe escape of the double standards? Thank you very much. We have space for one more question. No, sorry, you're not a committee member. I'm sorry. We can only give the floor to committee members. Yes, please. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> Honorable guests, ladies and gentlemen, there is sure. Uh, for sure, it's a pity that we, in the Council of Europe, which is celebrating its 70th anniversary, have the problem with political prisoners because this. Organization was created to ensure the realization of human rights, promotion of democracy, and establishment of rule of law. But the main problem we have here is that, unfortunately, we are trying to deviate from the very problem. We are here speaking with the, about corporate persons, about corporate faces, and it's not fair, and it's not in a good fair to discuss the general problem concerning the political prisoners and mix it with another problems. Problems which is result of another situation, problem which is not interconnected with the problems to which this hearing is dedicated. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now before I allow Ms. Yunus to respond very briefly, I would like to make some closing remarks myself. We are running out of time for this hearing. Uh, I would like to briefly respond to the remarks of Mr. Voladze. Uh, I think that most of them were sort of directed towards my report, for which I am a rapporteur. Uh, he had some questions about well, the legal effect of my report and the selectivity of this report and what the consequences would be for those who could not, in one way or another, bring their case into my report. I believe there's a certain misunderstanding to the nature of the reports of the Parliamentary Assembly uh, in these remarks. As it happens, as it functions in this Assembly, motions are written up, usually by our members, sometimes by committee. They are the nature, or I mean the nature of these motions, come from the interest of our members. Uh, there's no Council of Europe mechanism that comes up with these motions. There are members in this parliamentary assembly that come up with issues that they want to explore. We do not have a direct judicial effect with these reports. However, once they are approved by the assembly, they do have a very compelling effect on the member states involved. And I do hope that they would respect the recommendations of this assembly. We do not have the nature of a court. I am not a national court. I am not the European Court of Human Rights. I do not have any kind of judicial authority invested in me. I am, however, a parliamentarian who has the mandate to investigate the question of issues of political prisoners in Azerbaijan, and I am exercising that mandate. And I believe that the government of Azerbaijan is well aware of these mechanisms and how it functions here and what kind of effect reports from the Parliamentary Assembly have. They are not court judgments and they are not meant to be understood in this way whatsoever. Now, I had hoped already to have visited Azerbaijan in a couple of weeks. 
Uh, but the Formula One Grand Prix, which would have been in the same week, made this too complicated. <laughs> now, the Azerbaijani authorities have told me that May or June would be better for them, and I am happy to accommodate this short delay. I am exercising my method, and I do hope that these questions do not mean that I do not have the kind permission of the Azeri authorities to visit your beautiful country again. Uh, that concludes my remark. I will now give the floor to Leila Yunus, very briefly, please, because we have very little time. About speech of Samet Sid, dictator in all history, need foreign enemy. If there was a Karabakh conflict with Armenia, dictator will define another enemy. It is uh, history, it's not Leila say. And about political prisoners. You spoke about our refugees, but people who struggle in Karabakh frontier, veterans of Karabakh war, now stay in life in turned prisons in Bogustan prison. And here it is a published the appeal of the people, 36 people who stay in prison 5, 15 years, and they appeal to the members of PASE to freedom for these people. And only when dictatorship finished, it will be possible to have peaceful agreement with Armenia. Because you are not interested in peaceful agreement. Thanks. Okay. Okay, so I, I, will, I will come to the... Because, because she just presented the paper of uh, special police forces. Mr. Sedov, I, I have got the same letter that this is false information. Okay. Mr. Sekov, we have seven minutes. But I, I will now come to the closing remarks as rapporteur for Azerbaijan. Uh, as we saw in the last years, the fantasy of the judiciary is limited. The most cases are in, 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 in prison by drugs or tax. And in the last year, we had more prisoners by religion uh, matters. But, uh, it's called behind so-called religious terrorists, whatever that means. So this is not a country of drug dealers. It's not a country of non-taxpayers, but it's where, but uh, to bring people under this uh, title in prison is really uh, strange, and it shows that uh, the rules of law and the, and the independent judiciary is not really. Working. The next problem which we have also is to release prisoners, and in, uh, that and uh, and I just uh, mentioned the case of Mehman Uzenov and his passport when he cannot travel. That, uh, that those who are released are not really 100% released and not a free person and citizen, and uh, and so the passports are limited. And second. The bank accounts are mostly frozen after a release or a pardoning, so they had also to fight for the civil rights to have your own pass the bank account, you have your passport that you can travel as a free citizen. Otherwise, the value of pardoning is is like house arrest. The, the house arrest is not what is hinter a, a, a closing a case. At the, at the end, at the end, uh, and this is important. We have a relation with Azerbaijan in the monitoring process. That means that both sides are working on a roadmap. A roadmap uh, in the values of the Council of Europe. That means democracy, human rights, and rules of law. It's including the, the judiciary. It's including the, the, uh, the prosecution. It's including police. And, and that is why we are discussing that, and that is why we have the right to discuss it, because this is the, when, when Azerbaijan entered, a, a member of, of Council of Europe, they know what to, in, for what they signed, and we have to, uh, to go on. And in the last minute, you can uh, read in, in German, or you can read in Russian, there is the new book about the life of Leila and Arif Yunus from the <coughs> Soviet camp to the Azerbaijan prisons. It's the, 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 the life of, 
human rights uh, uh, defenders and prisoners and uh, uh, I can only say it's very interesting to read. Thank you. Thank you very much. I thank all of the guests for coming, uh, for attending this hearing, uh, for the kind interest seen by all of, shown by all of our members. Thank you very much for coming. The meeting is closed. <laughs>